we go live. Uh, I'm with the person Nate, not your country club. We're just gonna do all of the videos, podcast uh, about tennis and everything what's gonna happen in the future, uh, covering some tennis tournaments. Uh, good to see you. I mean, we know each other for three years and we're really excited to just bring the energy together and talk about tennis life. How do you feel like being here and like creating some tennis content, going on a tennis court, like traveling? You've been in India, was Miami. How was that? You know, last March was one of the best months of our mm -hmm. tennis. Um, I don't even know what you call it, a journey, I guess. <laughs> it's weird to call it, like it's just kind of, we're, we're just kind of going wherever tennis takes us and trying to uh, have fun with it. I mean, obviously content has been something that's been able to change a lot of our lives and um, it's, a, it's just fun to promote and be around the sport that we love since we were kids. I saw a couple tennis players, they started following you, like uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Potapova, you were, you were just like cheering so crazy on uh, Shevchenko, Shevchenko match and you were logged in about his first uh, match winning against uh, Daniel Galan, Daniel Galan. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty intense. So, no. that was fun. I think it was fun. <laughs> Did you like the video I posted from it? Definitely like the vibe. Oh my God. Uh, Sasha was like, he was logged in, like <laughs> just playing tennis. Uh, and I think it was still a good win for him to just no. win that first round of Miami Open. Yeah, because I mean, Miami's got a lot of support for the South Americans. I mean, down there, I mean, it's a massive uh, difference when you play a South American mm -hmm. versus anybody else. I mean, even for American players, they don't get that type of support. South Americans, whether it's Argentinian, Chilean, Brazilian, any of the, like Tiago Sabath Wild, Nicholas Yari, like all these guys, I mean, what the fans do for those guys in these matches is, it's like real organized cheering, you know, it's not just like vamos, it's like yeah. they actually like are singing <laughs> and stuff, you know, it's like, it's uh -huh. a legit thing and they bring their flags and uh, Shevchenko had to deal with that, so we were going crazy, we sat, I sat in the uh, Shevchenko box because there's no other seats and I was like, no, it's fine. I've been following him for a while, yeah. so it was cool. I think everyone was against Shevchenko. Maybe like five people, <laughs> on, only his box were cheering, cheering for this guy. But I guess he handled that well. No, I was super. I got to talk to him a little bit after the match and just exchange. But it was cool. He was like, you know, I think the four or five of us in his box were able to kind of just give him the like lock in. You know, like throughout the whole entire match, it's the hardest thing. You got the entire place stopping their feet and stuff, and you miss a first serve and they're clapping. It's like. Um, but Chuck was the type of athlete that he, I think he he embraces that. No, that's that's that was fun. Like I was able to watch Jari uh, against uh, Thiago. Uh, I believe that was like the four round, and it was yeah. probably the best match of the of the tournament. I told you. I told you. <laughs> anytime you, see, you get a chance to go see a South American yeah. in Miami, uh -huh. U.S. Open the same way. But um, no, Pot uh, Anna Potapova was like. She was like, it's worse to play a South American than an American. I was like, no doubt. Like, way worse. <laughs> I mean, we were able, like, if we were just, like, in Miami, like, 90% of the people just speaking Spanish there. <laughs> they calling you papi, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you, you never know. Anyway, like, I just want to tell you, like, why we're doing this. I think we just, like, matching our energy very well together. And I think, like, tennis, all of the people, they're just doing everything by yourself. But we're just trying to bring some more people to just bring the big, the biggest tennis content of the entire, uh, in the entire world. So that's why, that's why we're gonna, we're gonna do this more often. We're gonna bring more people here. So we're gonna build like a team. That's, that's why we're, uh, we're here. You know, we're not doing just like for one person, we're doing, we're doing this for all of the people, all the tennis content. So I think that that'll be fun. They never, I never seen anything like that on YouTube or just anywhere like this. I saw a couple ping pong content that was <laughs> that like inspired me. So yeah, yeah. I think that's that's the way to go. Like, what do you think about that? Like, no, I think mm -hmm. tennis is just we just need to. There's just not that many fun content creators, and it's partly not because the content creators don't want to do it, but it's a lot of restrictions and a lot of rules and stuff that it's just like a big headache to deal with. If you're trying to bring the spotlight to the sport. I feel like other sports don't have that barrier, and that's just one that I know personally I've had to um, face on like a week in and week out basis for the last like five years. Yeah, and I think like tennis players are like very individual, like that's most the other thing, most sure. most of the time, very, you know. 
Yeah. So like other other sports, they trying to keep it everything like everyone like together, and here like everyone is trying to go in different directions. So that's why like we're trying to be the first people that we're trying to like stay stay connected here. Mm -hmm. But uh, we yeah we're able to travel to as we said like Indian Wells in Miami. And what's the biggest difference between uh, Indian Wells and Miami? Just give me one one thing. What was what was for you the biggest difference there? Um. One one feels like a tennis tournament and one doesn't feel like a tennis tournament. Okay. That's the biggest okay. difference. <laughs> <laughs> which one, which one is which one? You have to tell me. I'm not sure. <laughs> Indian Wells is a, a real tennis tournament uh -huh. at a real tennis venue, um, put on by like professionals. I feel like from every aspect, whether it's like the grounds, the venue, like the actual stadiums, um, the merchandise stores. I mean, all of it. The bathrooms. Everything is like it's top of the line. And then. Miami Open, they're doing their thing. They're getting a lot of people to come watch tennis, which is good. But it's uh, when you like when you're standing on the grounds and you look around, you don't really know where you are. You're like, I could be anywhere. And it's just like there's a lot of bleachers and scaffoldings, and you heard Casper Rude's whole thing. It's just like <laughs> it's not quite as buttoned up as uh -huh. Indian Wells, and it also doesn't like you know they don't have that beautiful backdrop. I just wish they would have kept it at Key Biscayne, which is like Grand Grandin Park, Grandin Park, whatever. I, I'm probably saying it wrong, but. Uh, no, Key Biscayne looks like it, it looked like Indian Wells of the South, and definitely a bummer that it uh, that they left there. I guess 2019. Um, but yeah, Miami Open it was a good time just to see the tennis. But Indian Wells, best tournament that I've been to in this in this country. No, I mean that's I agree with that. Like Miami, Miami was like you're feeling like you're on the football stadium. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So no, it was it was fun. Like I'm not gonna say it's it's a bad tournament. It's like a thousand tournament. But as you said, like Casper Ruud was complaining so much about like there's no cold water, there's no <laughs> towels. He was just saying all the bad things about this tournament. He said this is Masters one thousand, and there's we don't have even cold water on the court. So they just couldn't couldn't believe it. They gotta so. get a water drop uh, sponsorship. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. All right, uh, we know Novak Djokovic just uh, announced that Grant Ivanisevic is not going to be his coach anymore. That's really surprised me. We got Boris Becker that's waiting for him, or who else Who else can be Can be this guy? But I don't know, like Novak Djokovic, I know he's, as I said, like he's always hungry to get some wins. Like he just had a couple bad losses recently, but it's not really necessary to just change the coach. So... I don't know where, where it's going to take him. Because, like, after he changed the coach in 2019, I believe it was that, like, then he was just on fire, winning match over match, tournament over tournament. And, you know, a few, few losses cannot, cannot change it like that. Yeah, but I think he wants – I think he sees, like, he feels a little bit of pressure from Sinner and Carlos and even from – I mean, m mainly those two guys right now. I think him feeling that pressure, he feels like he needs another, uh, like, push, like something that we can push him over. And I think – he feels like he might have tapped Goran's tennis knowledge to a certain point. And, I mean, this is just me kind of, but I feel like, you know, he had some um, outlashes at Goran th in, ma in big matches before where he was, like, giving him one of these things, like, it's over type. So it's like uh, maybe he feels like he doesn't have any more, uh, like, answers to, to get mm -hmm. from him, I guess. I mean, in, the, in just the way of putting it. But um, I'm really interested to see who he picks and for the next guy because he's always been someone that wants a coach. He hasn't done, like, the Nick Curios or Roger Federer way where just, like, he just does it on his own. He always likes to kind of have that um, back and forth. Yeah, I mean, Novak Novak is like, you know, one day he just can wake up and just like, all right, you're going to be my coach, you know. And I think that's cool. Like, he's always looking to get more knowledge, you know. Like, maybe as you said, like, uh, Goran was not giving him enough knowledge at the end. He was not learning enough. And then he's just like, okay, I need, I need someone to just like, that's going to teach me something, something new, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, like, I'm feeling it can impact uh, Novak Djokovic in a good way, but it can impact him also, like, a little bit the other way. So, it's like, we'll see. We'll see where, where, where he's going to end up being. So, I'm, I'm really he's excited. Gonna, uh -huh. He's going to get somebody good. I mean, somebody. I can't wait. Uh, it's going to be a former player, I hope. Hopefully, someone that is more recently out of the game. I think he, like, this is another young guy just to, because mm -hmm. um, he's got, yeah, we'll see, though. <laughs> okay. We'll see. All right, and last thing, we got clay season tournament coming in. Uh, first tournament, 250 in uh, Portugal. Estoril. Yeah, Estoril, right. Casper Root, seed number one. Hubi Hurkacz, yeah. number two. 
who you got? Who you? What's your what's what's your prediction for like clay season tournament? And to your predictions for like uh, we got Olympics also in Roland Garros court. So is it gonna be like a good warm up tournament before the Olympics? I know some of the players like Iga Świątek. She said the main focus it's not even Roland Garros for her. It's Olympics. This is what she said. Where are the Olympics this year? In uh, at the same courts. No way. Yeah, it's this, in Paris. Yes, it's in Paris. No way. So you got you got a big big warm up, you know. Wow, that's <laughs> that's nuts. They're playing the they're playing Olympic games on clay. Yeah, so you guys listen. This guy, <laughs> this this guy, Alexander Zverev, just came <laughs> out to him like after he won the Olympic games, and maybe it's gonna happen again. They gonna he's gonna win the Olympic olympic gold medal and then they just gonna start hanging out again <laughs> no, that was no that was one of my cooler 2021 he came to cincinnati right after he won olympic gold in tokyo um he had a couple fun days with bayern munich and they flew him on a private jet to, to cincinnati and i was like the only person at the practice and no we had a uh, he knew what, kind of what tennis point was obviously being from germany and that's what i was going on uh, con- who i was doing content for and it was just pretty funny how we, we ended up just kind of connecting then and um, no, I'm always rooting for Sasha. Definitely a Zverev fan. I, yeah. So like, all right, give me like maybe two, three players that they can be like very dangerous uh, at the on the on the clay on the clay tournament. This Fabian this year. Fabian Merjan for sure. The guy that just went to the mm-hmm. uh, what the quarterfinals what? of Miami, and he's also yeah he's won. He's been dominant at the Masters level. Uh, like he's like ten and four or something like that. I mean, something he's killing, killing um, right now. I think Fabian uh-huh. Marijan's a guy that's going to be gone on clay. He's already got a win on Carlos on red clay um, last year. Um, Kasper Root? Do we got Kasper? I, like, he's been yeah. twice in the final of uh, Roland Garros, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kasper loves clay, obviously. He'll always, um, <clears throat> like, he loves dirtballing people. Um, <laughs> I think Sasha, I mean, obviously, 2022, before he got hurt, looked like he was going to take out Rafa, I thought, on Roland Garros. Sasha's a guy that, um, I think his game... Actually, I think he's suited. I think it's a hot take kind of, but I think he's suited better on red clay because like he, he likes to extend rallies. He doesn't naturally play offensive tennis, so the fast courts don't really like. I know he's had the good result in going to a final, I believe, of U.S. Open or whatever against Novak. But like, I think because he's got the big serve. But once the rally starts, Zverev likes to play more uh, defensive, like counter, counterpunch, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Like counterpunch in tennis. Mm-hmm. So I think that's why the clay courts are might suit his game better than a hard court. I mean, those are my. Kind of, yeah, but, and you said Casper, obviously, but um, another guy that maybe people don't know about. Like R- Rafael Nadal? <laughs> no. That's gonna be, it's the last hurrah. It's the last hurrah for Rafa. I mean, this is it. This I is know. it. This is last it. two tournaments, I guess. Olympics, That's and it. Roland Garros, and Olympics. Yeah. That's crazy. It's a wrap. Uh, yeah, and then... The, we're then, down to the one. Then we're done. Maybe if he's going to be, I'm assuming if he's going to be in the quarterfinal, semifinal... He might be able to continue at least to try to play a little bit longer. But we know he was focusing entire year just to play the clay season tournament to just be ready. Yeah. He could play in the India was we saw his f- first practice, but like he just didn't want to get hurt. He was not not feeling one hundred percent, so he said, "No, I'm not gonna play." You know. Yeah, he, he got that. He got that bad. He got that uh, nice little bag from Las Vegas Carlos match. Yeah. He's like, Give me that two million dollars, <laughs> and that's guaranteed money, and I'm out of here. Hey, thanks, Rafa. Appreciate you coming by. <laughs> he took a set off, Carlos. Though. No, it was, it was good. He had some chances even to win in yeah. the super tie break, yeah? yeah. But no, vamos, Rafa. Uh-huh. I'm a big Rafa fan. Always have been. No. Yeah, we, we're cheering for you very, very hard. Uh, yes, so subscribe us more. Like, we're going to make more content like this. And also, let let us know what you guys think about um, how we how we talk or what subject subjects do you guys want to hear more and we're ready to to talk and i think like have fun yeah just like we're ready to go you know that's what it is i think youtube youtube like is the way is the way we're gonna focus focus the most we're gonna be on the court as well we're gonna invite more people so it's gonna be very very entertaining so make sure to just watch us and yeah see see you in a few days right yes sir all right yes, sir yes, sir <laughs>